good morning everyone yeah i thank god for giving me this opportunity to come with you all and to share today's reading and i also to thank the united prayer team for giving me the opportunity to come and to share today's word so as we all know today's reading is taken from the book called live like elijah and uh live like elijah this particular book as i was reading i was able to understand the calling that this this book is showing to us and the calling is a call to live by faith in god so we all know we have learned and we have listened to so many incidents from the word of god where our bible heroes live an action of faith they live a life of faith and we have been able to learn from these things and we we are also uh, by the grace of god as children of god god has given us the strength and the grace to exercise faith as we live in this last day So today's chapter uh, topic is defined as hear the rain and the memory verse is taken from the book of 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 41 and it goes like this Now Elijah said to Ahab go up eat and drink for there is the sound of the roar of a heavy shower So, and it began with the sentence elijah prayed the fire fell and the people said the lord he is god but the land was so but the land was still as dry as a desert dress now when we all hear this particular sentence we may be thinking oh when was the land as dry as desert Now let me just uh, bring you all back to the incident which happened previously. Now the children of Israel, they were so wicked during Elijah's time. They were growing deeper and deeper into idolatry. And the uh, and Elijah seeing this wickedness was so great he was so disheartened. He was so discouraged and worried and he uh, and God wanted to teach the children of israel a lesson and so what happened is yes and so what happened is god brought famine god brought famine upon that place and the people they started dying they started thirsting after water and all these things happened and then elijah and then king ahab king ahab was the king during that time so king ahab also was worried and then so finally then elijah came and then elijah uh, and and before that we also know the incident that uh, the people the heathen people they prepared a sacrifice and they challenged elijah that and they challenged elijah and they even vowed him that their sacrifice would be accepted by the heathen god and elijah Elijah sacrifice would just go in vain. So what Elijah accepted this challenge and he did as he also prepared his sacrifice and then and then we can see that uh, and then uh, yeah and as the heathen people they were doing their kind of thing they were seeing whether their sacrifice would be accepted but nothing happened and then we can see that Elijah knelt down and he prayed and he prayed and then what happened he brought fire down from heaven yes and fire came and consumed elijah's sacrifice so when the great fire came the people became so afraid and they were telling the god he is god and then they all knew that elijah's god was a living god elijah's god was a powerful god and that god poured fire down from heaven and consumed the complete sacrifice and now we go down we see that elijah may have cast his sandal in the cracked dirt thinking perhaps he looked around him a moment 
شاین آف تھری ایئر چھِ آف ڈراوٹ اینڈ ڈیتھ واچ ایوری ویئر چھِ ناو دِس ڈراوٹ دِس فیمن واز کنٹینیوسلی واز فار اراؤنڈ اے ٹائم پیریڈ آف تھری ایئرس اینڈ اینڈ گراؤنڈ واز آل کریپ ڈن دیر واز دیر واز ناٹ اے سنگل ڈراپ آف واٹر وچ واز اویلیبل اینڈ ایلائجا had promised the people that if you all repent and if you all would be converted my god from heaven would bring back the rain and so what happened is uh, yes and then he also remembered and uh, when the word of god came to him in Je- in jerefat and now jerefat is a place and there the word of god came upon elijah and told him go show yourself to ahab and i will send rain on the face of the earth so now this was the command given by god to elijah and it was time for the promised rain the rain with god with elijah told the people that god would bring the promised train but nothing happened for three years but but i i i was just thinking and i was just um thinking like why did it take three years like maybe of course the, the wickedness of the children of israel was so high so god really god wanted to teach them a lesson but then god had his appointed time God had his perfect, his perfect time and he wanted the children of Israel to wait patiently for three years and finally then the word of God tells to Elijah, go yourself and show to Ahab and I will send rain on the face of the earth. And now this, when this was told to Elijah, Elijah walked up to King Ahab and then the prophet knew that walking by faith did not stop with the calling for fire now this uh, this example of faith we we first we saw in elijah prayed for the fire and fire came and consumed the sacrifice and now now he had to show his faith to the king of that country king ahab and then he had to tell ahab ahab now stop worrying stop being worried and ten just listen to me and just go up and eat and drink for there is a sound of the roar of a heavy shower so now when ahab hear this we can imagine uh, like let us imagine ahab reaction he may be what there is not even rain coming and now elijah is telling go and drink go and enjoy go for party for there is going to come a sound of roar of the heavy shower he must have thought why is elijah telling me this i don't see any kind of thing which i need to celebrate i don't see anything i don't hear anything but still why is elijah asking me to celebrate but even though elijah saw these kind of expressions in a half page what he did elijah stood firm in his ground and he only expected one thing he expected the king to obey and to celebrate the rain that had not yet fallen so the king used the uh, uh, used the obedient that he obeyed the king soon began to party and after that uh, we can see that ahab went up to eat and drink so ahab decided that he would obey elijah and he went up to eat and drink but elijah went up to the top of mount carmel and then he crouched down on the earth and put his face between the knees he humbled himself before god he prayed with expectancy for god to bring rain just as god brought fire immediately after one prayer of faith so when king went for partying we could see that elijah was praying he was praying so earnestly and so fervently he was praying and you know putting his head in between his knees 
completely surrender in him, his, himself because he just witnessed one prayer of faith that the fire came, immediately came down uh, and consumed his sacrifice. So he knew definitely that the same God who consumed the sacrifice would definitely hear and answer his prayer and would also bring rain to this drought-hit place. And then Elijah said to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is no nothing. And he said, Go back seven times. And he prayed with the same faith as he had and when he prayed for the fire. But there was nothing, not a cloud in the sky. There was not even a cloud and there was nothing. For seven times he asked the servant to go up and see whether anything is there, whether you all can see anything. So when he would go in and tell him, was there anything? There was nothing. So this was the most painful test of faith. It was one thing to boldly exercise your faith in front of a crowd. That is scary and difficult. Elijah could have lost his life. But to pray in the secret place for what God already told him that it would come to pass and receive nothing in return is another danger. Elijah could have lost his faith. But Elijah kept on praying and praying. And he kept on sending his servant to look across the Mediterranean Sea for any signs of cloud coming on the way. And the lesson which we can cheer from, uh, we can, which we can understand from this incident is Elijah did not give up. He did not give up. Why? Because he was asking God to do what he promised to do. God had promised to bring the rain. And Elijah would determine to pray until God fulfilled his promise to send the rain. And it came about at the seventh time that he said, Behold a cloud as small as a man's hand is coming up from the sea. And he said, Go up and say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down so that the heavy shower does not stop you. Elijah prayed until he saw God give the slightest evidence that he was answering his prayer for the rain. Now, this was the answer of prayer. Elijah was so joyful, he just sent the servant immediately and said, Go, go and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down so that the heavy shower does not stop you all. And then again, Elijah risked, risked his life, uh, risked his reputation, sorry, uh, reputation to command the king to stop in the middle of his meal pack up his things and get off the mountain before the rain came, before even one drop could fall. So Elijah asked the king to go for party and to celebrate. Then again, Elijah risked his reputation and he, and he even asked the servant to tell the king to stop his meal, to stop his enjoyment and to just pack up his things and to get off the mountain before the rain, uh, before the rain comes. Elijah moved by faith. He lived by faith in the power of God to do the impossible. I love this sentence. Let me repeat once again. He lived by faith in the power of God to do the impossible. So likewise, we also have to live by faith in the power of God to do the impossible so that we could overcome every evil challenge and we could live a beautiful and a wonderful, victorious Christian life. And as he stepped out in faith, God honored him. In a little while, while the sky grew black with cloud and wind, there was heavy shower. Ahab ro ro rode and went, th uh, went to Jezreel. We must hear the sound of rain before it comes. 
which shall be in the last day, God said that I will pour forth my spirit on all mankind. Therefore, repent and return, so that your sins may be wiped away, in order that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus the Christ appointed for you. Yeah, so as we read on further, we can see that the author of the book Live Like Elijah, Pastor Dan, and uh, April, there was another person, maybe it may be his wife. So this April and Pastor Dan called for fasting and prayer at their church. And uh, they prayed about it next morning at the church because they were much believe uh, they were much inspired and they believed by faith that god was ready to do much much more for his people and the next day what happened is they drew their car toward the church with excitement and because the previous night they believed in faith that people were coming and uh, people were going to come and all the benches would be filled with people and uh, God would come and God uh, people could experience God's holy presence dwelling there and you know many people and conversion of souls would happen. So, uh, so they knew like okay so they arrived right uh, before the noon and saw that they were the only car in the parking lot so well their expectation failed and what happened is they when they really they came before noon toward the church side and when they were parking their car in the church part, parking lot they found that only their car was the only one which was there and but then they said well maybe they parked all the other cars they must have parked in the back to make more room so that other cars could be parked uh, at the usual car parking lot so they said to that uh, so they said that to themselves and they comforted themselves and then they walked into the church but guess what happened it was quiet as a tomb there was no one there and the clock struck noon so when the clock struck noon, these two, the April and Pastor Dan, they knelt down and they knelt down and they started praying that God would perform some miracle, that God would do something so that they could just praise and glor glorify his holy name. And time was just ticking by and but still no one showed up. And then they heard a door opening sound. And then they looked up with joy, with, the, with their bright face to see who was coming in. But then no one was coming in through that do door. And so they were thinking, is this kind of any cruel joke? And then they looked down and there came a small little boy. And the boy's name was Dex. And so they said, hi, Dex, what are you doing here today? And surprisingly, Dex looked up at Pastor Dan and said, why are you asking me this question? Today is the day for fasting and prayer, isn't it? So I have come here for fasting and prayer. And Pastor Dan became surprised. And he said, yes, yes, it is. And they were just so surprised because they could not see any elderly people, any other adult coming and attending the fasting and prayer, but they could just see a small little boy coming and asking, hey, today is the day for fasting and prayer. I've come to attend it. And so was everywhere. And, and then uh, the, um, yes, the pastor Dan asked this boy that, do you know where uh, where everyone else is? And Dex said, no, I don't know where everyone else is, but I only know about myself. I came with a humble prayer request to pray. And then what uh, Pastor, Dan, uh, uh, Pastor Dan asked is, who do you want to pray for? April and I will pray with you. And then Dex looked 
at us and said, I have come here to pray for my daddy, that God would talk to him, that God will talk to his heart and bring him to be a part of the revival. To then Pastor Dan uh, said, okay, Pastor Dan understood his prayer request and then Pastor Dan said, okay, I know I understand your prayer request and I know and I know that your daddy has no plan to come for revival, but then we would pray for him and we would pray and we would pray that God would touch his heart so that he could come for this revival meeting. And that depth also said one sentence that he and his mom used to lead small group meeting, group prayer meeting, and there even even there also his dad would not come and we used to not participate in those prayer meetings too. Okay, so then all right, it was the time to pray and Pastor Dan said, okay, Dex, you can start. And then Dex cried out to God to bring his daddy to be a part of the revival and to make their home a happy home. And he prayed with expectancy, with hope, with faith that God could and God would do anything. And as they prayed, they heard the door, they heard the church, the church main door slammed open and closed. Someone came near where we were pray, where they were praying. Someone came near where they were praying, and they could hear the noise of someone drop down themselves to their knees. So Pastor Dan opened with one eye, and then he saw who had just joined joined them. And to his utter surprise, it was Death Dad. It was the father for whom Dex was praying so earnestly who was kneeling beside his son. And with his eyes full of wonder, after praying, Dex looked up at his dad and said, Daddy, we were just praying for you to come and God brought you here. And Dex's dad whispered later and he said he had no intention of coming to the prayer and fasting at noon that day or any other day. But suddenly he felt that God changed his heart and God was directing him to come to the church and pray. And after that, um, he came night after night and day after day and then he, hear, he heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. That means because he listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit, he came right at that moment and he was able to join Dan, uh, Dex praying and he was able to also join April and Pastor Dan and they had a very beautiful and wonderful session of prayer. So this is what, this is how God works in people's lives. We may have a lot of prayer requests. We may have a lot of things which may seem impossible for us. But when we pray earnestly, when we pray fervently, when we pray with faith, the power of God, the God of impossible will make all things possible. And here the promise is written that act on God promises in his word, even when there is nothing to see. Now we know the definition of faith. We, we know in the book of Hebrews, faith is given as faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we may not see that particular thing, but we when but when we act on God promises in his word, and even though we don't see anything, when we act in faith, God will answer our prayer and God will work all things together for good so that we could just praise and glorify his holy name. So may these wonderful words inspire each one of us to be more faithful, to be more loyal to him so that we could continue to live for his glory and honor. May God's name be glorified. Amen.